coming up on today's show. Because I think there's a lot of times when people don't, you know, the voices are going and they don't know whether it's negative or positive. Kind of what we're talking about here is everyone can be a superhero in their own way as long as they recognize kind of some of the attributes. And so many people who struggle with you know, kind of creating systems or maintaining systems in their lives. Be your own superhero today on Keeping You Organized. Hello, welcome to Keeping You Organized. I think you're ready for me to rip my shirt open and see the big S on my shirt, but no, it's just your standard white undershirt today. But today we are going to talk about being a superhero, and this is an interesting concept, so let's bring on a very interesting person, Janine Sarda-Jones from Organize Me, Inc. Uh, Janine, welcome to Keeping You Organized. Thanks, John. Nice so, to see you. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had you on, and this is great. Uh, I know you were recently uh, down at, at the NAPO show, correct? Yes, it was so much fun, and it was so great to see Leanne. Yes, Leanne came back with one of those big steer uh, I don't know how she's keeping it in her backyard, but it's, uh, it's, uh, I guess the neighbors are kind of a little angry right now. But, <laughs> I would be. Yeah. So, hey, we have this concept of being your own superhero. Uh, give us a little background on what this is all about. Well, I've been thinking it's, it's something that kind of percolated over time, you know, and I realized that um, over... I don't know, however many years I've been organizing, that clients would sometimes say, like, I have a little Janine on my shoulder <laughs> and tells me what I'm, you know, what I'm doing something that's not good. And I've had so many clients over the years who've been so amazing, you know, they don't realize their own amazingness. Right. Is that the best way to put it? Well, that's, yeah, it's good. And I, and I think kind of what we're talking about here is everyone can be a superhero in their own way as long as they recognize kind of some of the attributes and that's that's where we're going to go with this right absolutely because right. i do think that often most organizers would probably say this is that sometimes clients will put off their their amazingness onto the organizer and say you are so amazing and you did and and i always have to put it back to my clients and say no you did it you're amazing <laughs> Great. Well, let's get started. So uh, should we do these uh, number them? Like what would number one be? Number one would be notice your inner voices. Okay. And sometimes the inner voice is just negative self-talk that's these gremlins that sit behind you and basically whisper in your ear and tell you how you suck <laughs> and all kinds of terrible things. I cannot tell you how many times I've had a conversation with a client and I realized that they're having a conversation with somebody else who's sitting literally one client I said it sounds like the wicked witch <laughs> and it's that's one aspect of that inner voice and the other is your intuition okay. when you feel like you're in a situation and you're it could be you're in danger or it could be that something good is happening and it's like that inner voice that's telling you notice this right yeah you know it's interesting like professional sports you know uh, people especially like uh, you know golfers and stuff that and i don't know if you call it self-talk but you know again it could be a positive inner voice it can also be a negative one and they yes. really try to you know hone in on that you know, the mental game or that, that voice that's helping them drive their performance. I think it's probably the same with orga getting organized too. Absolutely, because there's so many people who struggle with, you know, kind of creating systems or maintaining systems in their lives. And when they give up, it's really the gremlin telling them, you can't do this. But then there are other people that who after implementing the system with an organizer often or they see this beautifully designed and organized space and they just think oh my goodness then they get so excited and then they i've had clients who come back to us years later and say i still keep it exactly the same way that you guys set it up and i say that is awesome <laughs> because That's great. they we help them identify a way for them to maintain it and then they can maintain it themselves. That's the best kind of client. 
Right. So let's talk then about how, how do you like identify and then more importantly, how would you manage this to use it to your advantage? Because I think we might all agree that they're that kind of, you know, person or voice or whatever it is, is there. But how do we manage that and overcome it or, or control it? Well, I think you have to first you have to notice it, because I think there's a lot of times when people don't, you know, the voices are going and they don't know whether it's negative or positive. I mean, I don't even think that that becomes a question for them. But for many clients, when I see them doing that, I would notice it. And I always say, hey, I want you to be able to notice this. Right. And that's right. something that over time, it's so, it's like practicing, you know, like meditation. Maybe you don't do it so well the first time, but over time, you become a guru, your own guru. Right. Yeah. And you, and you don't want that voice coaching you if it's giving you bad advice. Right. No. So I think, yeah. So identify it. All right. Well, let's let, let's move on to number two then. No, but there's one thing, John. Oh, okay. Let's stay there's with number really one. Good, there's a really good book called Feeling Good. And in that book, you know, the things that you do inside your own head, like labeling yourself and mm. things like that, that's, it, there's so many exercises in that book that can help you identify what is actually going on in your inner head, you know, inside your head about the negative self-talk. Okay, great. Well, we'll put the link for that book in the show notes. So if someone's driving right now or watching and, and they want to access that, uh, we'll put that feeling good is the name of the book, correct? Yes. All right. It's a really good book. Good. All right. Let's move on to number two then. Uh, so number two is you have to be vigilant about your boundaries. Mm. Um, and you have to do that often with others. Um, I, I kind of think that sometimes people will overstep. And it's kind of like when somebody gives you a gift. <laughs> and and it's, uh, this happened. This is a funny uh, way of looking at it. But sometimes when someone gives you a gift and then you feel like it's necessary for you to take that gift out when they come and visit, even if it's something you don't really like, but you have to take that gift out and display it when that person is visiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, kind yeah. of, that's you're letting that person overstep boundaries, you know, or if somebody asks you about a gift that they gave you, not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's totally overstepping boundaries. Right. Um, so you have to really be clear about what your boundaries are. I find that most of the people that I have worked with over the years have very porous boundaries. And so it's it's almost like they need permission from some of us to like let go of the things that really make it hard for them to, um, you know, appreciate, well, right. let me, well, I, I, I think what well, you know, I, I think too, like as far as like time management goes, that's an area where boundaries are so porous for a lot of people. And it becomes one of those issues where it's like, oh my gosh, how how do I get control of my time? And a lot of it it's simply just defining and putting those boundaries on it. Absolutely. I think that's a really perfect way of, of describing it because the you know, you don't have to have a color coded calendar in a you know do everything down to the minute but when you give all of your time to other people and you realize that or people are interjecting themselves i mean i think at work you you find a lot of people don't understand that they need time to focus in on work that they have to do sometimes and they have kind of an open door policy or open cubicle <laughs> policy or now in this day and age right. there are no doors so you know i I often, when people are working, I say, well, you have to put up a sign that says office hours are between this time and that time. I am focused right now. <laughs> and Absolutely. there's another thing called cave day or something like that, where you actually have a little sign that says I'm in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, and we've, we've done a bunch of podcasts uh, and articles on that. And there's a lot of information out there about you know, how you do protect those, uh, protect those times. But part of it is you set a boundary and you have to enforce it. And I think enforcement is kind of like the key to everything. Exactly. And it's, but you also have to enforce them with yourself when you are the one that's overstepping your own boundaries. Right. It's, 
you know, I, I always hear when people complain about other people doing things to them, I'm like, well, you're the one that's in control. Right. You can just say no, because no is a complete sentence. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we'll, we'll get into more of these tips on how to be your own superhero. We're with Janine Sarna Jones here on Keeping You Organized, and we'll be right back. It's the summer sale at myorganize.life with 25% off office products like file folders, hanging folders, accordion files, and presentation products. You can get it at myorganize.life. That's myorganize.life. 25% off all products. It's our summer sale at myorganize.life. We're back now on Keeping You Organized talking about be your own uh, superhero. And uh, we have Janine Sarna Jones, Organize Me Inc. Uh, and uh, Janine, you know, so before the break, we've kind of talked about the first two areas uh, of how to kind of recognize, you know, your, your boundaries. That's what we just got done. Are we kind of through with the boundaries area? I, I think so. I think if we just reiterate that it's with others and yourself. <laughs> right, yeah, particularly with yourself. And, and there's a lot of self-management that goes on with that. Oh, okay, let's go on to number three. Uh, number three is to define your superpowers. And this is, everyone is unique. You know, we we all have something about us that's different. Even though um, we may not feel that way, I definitely see that with the people that I work with. I always tell them every single brain is different. It's That's why I love doing what I do, because mm -hmm. I get to meet these people who have something unique about them. And I think an easy way to do that is to identify the quality that other people appreciate about you. Um, because often you're not the one, you're not inside, they're not inside you. <laughs> they don't know what's going on in your head, but they appreciate something that's outside and um, that you're projecting. And you need to basically take the time to listen to what people are saying. because. Have you ever noticed like when somebody tries to compliment you about something that they think is amazing about you and people say, oh, no, no, or they right. shrug it off? I really think it's something you have to actually receive. You have to like hear it and take it in. When it's something, when somebody some, says something positive, you need to really absorb it and hold on to that good feeling that comes from it. Right. But we're so all often trying to push that away. Right. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes I think uh, uh, people don't necessarily see their own superpowers or their own strengths. And uh, so I want give us some examples, maybe even in, in the organizing business that you work in, of, of some strengths that you see out of certain people. Um, well, I would say there's, well, something that people do all the time is compare themselves to other people mm. but so instead of that i try to get them to focus on the things that they do that's unique and interesting so if i like for example um trying to think well let me tell you what my superpowers are first okay i'd love to hear that yeah because i think that that helped me figure out my figuring out what my superpowers were was really super helpful. And then I could try to use the same language to help other people see their own. Um, but my superpower is that I am very calm and I'm very grounded. And when people are freaking out about whatever issue they have to deal with um, and they needed help to get it done, I come in and they immediately feel calmer and more grounded because that's what I carry with me. Right, and a lot of people when they're around other people sometimes take on the attributes of the of the person they're with. So if you are all wired up, you might get them all wired up, but coming in and helping calm the situation, particularly in organizing when people are typically overwhelmed anyway, yes. uh, having someone calm come in is really probably very helpful. Yes, and that's, because they're struggling with something. People don't usually reach out unless they need help and they have, they're at their wits end. Right. And, and I, would, I would imagine too, like uh, say creativity would be one that someone uh, can come up with creative solutions, uh, but they just need to realize that and then you can kind of guide them 
you know, on, on, you know, oh, hey, that was a great idea to implement in order to get organized. Yeah, and I think that some of what we need to do as organizers is really help people come up with some answers for themselves. Mm -hmm. So when, when I've had some clients, when I explain, you know, well, let's figure out what your superpower is. Sometimes it's that they can do so much for other people. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of the people that I've worked with over the years, they give a lot of themselves to other people. And that's why, you know, it's so important for them to, you know, acknowledge what they do and the, their ability to do it. Yeah. So whether they are philanthropists and they give a lot of money, which is, <laughs> some of my clients do that, but also that, you know, like um, moms that I've worked with who gave a lot to the schools that they, that they, their children were attending um, or in their community, whatever they did within their community. So, um, but their superpower could be just their giving heart, you know, that they want to give to the people in their community. Right. And that might relate to like when you're organizing, say, you know, they want to get rid of some of the stuff they don't need anymore and give it away. And that may be an another motivator you could say well you know you could throw it away but you could give it away and someone could use that and that might lighten you know that might light up that uh that talent in them yeah and i think that that's that's like one aspect of it but then there are other people that just have an amazing eye and they they can you know they can see what you can see the ability to get from point a to point c and have it be a beautiful space like, um, I think a lot of people on my team have that <laughs> superpower <laughs> for sure. That's good. Well, and yeah, and often, you know, it takes a couple different people with different skill sets and, and that will make an, make a, a good organization, at least when you have different, not, so not everybody is the same. You can tap into the people, you know, I'm sure if like someone needs a particular kind of person, you can recommend that. And I know in the organizer community there, you know, yeah. there's certain people have certain specialties and, and I've heard of this from many organizers that, you know, if I'm not the right fit, you know, I can recommend, you know, someone who can help you who maybe has a different skill. Yeah, because I think that that's part of it is defining, you know, what what you can bring to the table. Right. I think if you know what your superpower is and you're very confident in it, and I would say this to, you know, like my team definitely is like that. But for my clients, when we help them see, you know, fan the flame of their understanding of what they bring to the table, um, it's really amazing because then they can really own it. Yeah, great. Well, listen, I can already see we're not going to get through all of our uh, tips here uh, in this episode. Are you willing to come back next time and uh, finish this up? I am, but there's only two more. <laughs> well, you know what? If we're going to be a super podcast, we will uh, have to come back and do that. So, but, but before we go, let's tell people uh, for this time at least um, how they can get a hold of you and what some of the uh, services that you offer are. Oh, okay. Um, well, so Organize Me Inc. is a team based business. I have a great team, nine people, and we're based in New York City. I'm basically a move manager, project manager, certified professional organizer who helps people with transitions. Awesome. Um, and my team does all kinds of hands-on and project management for our clients here in, in New York City. But we also will move people out of New York, so we travel as well. Um, and I have a really deep Rolodex, so I'm one of those people that people come to when they're trying to find a solution for any kind of problem, from everything from a therapist to an HR director or somebody who manages HR. So awesome. that's basically what, what we do here. We also help people clean out estates and things like that and hold hands and get people organized. That, that's great. All right, folks. Well, we will continue this conversation on our next episode. We'll get the rest of the tips on how to be uh, your own superhero next time on Keeping You Organized.